Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer, so now let's talk silver. I do want to mention before we jump into this dangerous side of silver that silver is by far the safest and smartest investment. I highly recommend silver or gold, more specifically silver for some reasons, but precious metals in general, physical metals that have intrinsical value, value within itself. But like any investment, Right. There's risk involved. So hopefully by the end of this video, I will be able to lower that risk. If I would have seen a video like this when I first started stacking, I would have saved myself a lot of money. But now, even more so with these extremely high premiums. Premiums are the, the dollar amount on top of spot price. So if spot price is $20 and you have to pay $28 for a coin that's an $8 premium. Premiums are not going down anytime soon, meaning it's going to be harder to get your money back, um, you know, especially if you sell anytime soon before you allow spot price to rise, unless you just want to rip people's heads off on eBay or Amazon. I mean, you could do that, but regardless, it's harder to lower your dollar per ounce average as premiums go up. The whole point as you stack weight is to try to get as much weight as you can for as cheap as possible, closest to spot price. But if you have a lot of high premium or semi-numismatic coins that are that you know that are $15, $20 premiums, your dollar per ounce average is extremely high. So then in return, it's gonna be a lot harder to make your money back. Actually, most people that buy silver don't even break even. I don't want to scare you. That's just because they end up, you know, giving up or selling themselves short. But the whole point is I'm trying to give you guys a little bit of insight on why these premiums are so high right now, why they're not going to be going down anytime soon and what you can do about it. The what you can do about it part's also going to incorporate the most important strategy that a lot of people underestimate, or at least a part of a strategy, because we are strategizing here. We're not just throwing money at the wall, hoping it sticks. That's gambling. Investors make strategic decisions based off information, right? But selling, there's no wrong way to buy, but there are wrong ways to sell. At least you're putting fake money into real money when you buy silver. But when you're selling, that is where all the danger comes in. Now, I know you could say, Silver Slayer, I'm never going to sell, or why would you put fake money into real money and then transfer the real money back into fake money, yada, yada. But for the sake of this video, we're talking about someone who's trying to profit and will be selling someday. So this is going to be a very, very informational and educational and hopefully entertaining video. If you think by the end of this video is worthy of a like, then please like it. I also do post daily silver stacking videos. I highly recommend you send an email to the bottom left-hand corner, info at milesfranklin.com. That is the best place to buy your silver from. One of the only few authorized dealers left as the U.S. Mint cut off everyone, banned everyone else from buying silver from them. Great company, very trusted, highly recommend you go through them and build a business relationship. We're going to cover this article because it's just going to give a little bit of, you know, a, a little bit of structure as we go through everything that I want to talk about regarding premiums and why premiums are not going down anytime soon and how that could be so dangerous. So with that said, let's talk silver. Why silver premiums are so high right now and how one might take advantage of it. Now they go in to say the views and opinions expressed are those of yada yada yada, right? And that's of course, right? Everything is, is kind of just perception based when you're talking about something that has so many different angles and factors and you know incorporated. There is no just this is why. In this article, he will first explain how and why silver bullion premiums have aggressively increased since the middle of summer 2015 and how and what I'm doing to take advantage of the current premiums. So let's see what let, let's see what he's talking about. Why are silver premiums so dang high right now? Now I do like his point. This is his reason why premiums are high. In short, which there's a long version as well, silver premiums have increased due to a recent combination of higher silver bullion demand and lower silver bullion supplies. Yes, investing 101. Low supply 
high demand pushes the price up. Low supply of silver, high demand of silver, that's going to push the price up. Maybe not spot price, but the actual price you have to pay for an ounce is going to go up, right? A lot of people say, well, why isn't, I mean, there can't, it, there, there is no shortage because spot price is still low, right? That's not necessarily the case. The price is still going up. The premiums are. And as silver becomes more scarce, as demand is booming, record-breaking highs, and we also have a diminishing, rapidly diminishing supply shortage, premiums are only going to get worse, especially as most of these mints are running out of silver. Dealers now are paying record high premiums to buy silver back from their own customers. So that's even more so proof that premiums aren't going to go down. Because if a dealer is willing to pay you a 70% premium, then that means they still have to resell that same exact coin at a profit. And for them to profit, that means they would have to raise the premium even higher. Silver's paper spot price has recently fallen to six-year lows. And, and this article obviously was, was you know, written at a specific day and age, not right now, but it still has the same premise of what's going on with premiums. So um, they talk about bullion prices have not fallen. And the reason that spot price hasn't fallen but premiums or, or spot price hasn't risen but premiums are rising and that's because spot price is still suppressed, manipulated. And if you think that, the, the, that silver manipulation is, is a myth or a conspiracy, then go check out the, the stuff that J.P. Morgan, Merrill Lynch, and the Dutch Bank are dealing with. J.P. Morgan has been caught, fined $900 million, even three of their employees getting sent to prison because they have single-handedly, red-handedly gotten caught manipulating the price of silver for decades now. And not just J.P. Morgan's three employees getting sent to prison, also racketeering some of their employees. But this goes with many other banks, and I'm sure it's been going on with way more than just these three employees, and, and I'm sure it's at a much larger extent. Silver is manipulated because it's a much smaller market than gold, so it's easier to move the numbers around. So anyways, he could say, you can hear cynics out there saying, that's bold, dealers are taking advantage of everyone. It's not the case. If dealers were taking advantage of everyone, they wouldn't be offering record high premiums right now, ripping off themselves. Now, they have to take advantage to some extent, or how are they going to keep the lights on? Right? Local coin shops, they're all out of sale. Go to any of these sites. Most of these sites, you're going to see a button that says notify me or just you can't buy it. That, that used to be only for very rare specific coins, right? Like a Lunar Series 2 2012 Dragon or something. Nowadays, you see that notify me button on almost everything. And that's because everything's out of stock. They have some stuff in stock, some inventory, but most of it is gone, right? And that's not normal. So it says yes and no. I'm not going to deny that dealers partly use these moments of high demand to expand their profit margins and company war chests via larger premium charges. But I will also point out that without having an adequate bullion inventory on hand, if a dealer simply sold their smaller stack to the public at standard rates within bullion premiums, they will quickly run out, they'll quickly run out of inventory and then also may end up losing both customer base and potentially their business in the process. And yes, the U.S. Mint's a prime example. The U.S. Mint banned everyone from buying directly from them for a reason. Because the U.S. Mint has been having an extremely hard time finding silver. It's not necessarily the Mint's fault. It's more the U.S. government's fault. But regardless, the U.S. Mint has been running out of silver since 2020. They literally ran out of silver in 2020 had to make a 1 million mintage emergency supply from the San Francisco Mint at the end of the year. Then 2021, they came out and publicly admitted there's a silver shortage. They cannot find silver planchets. They had to make a, a, a very low mintage cap on the Type 1 and Type 2 Eagles. Then 2022, they had to cancel the Morgan uh, and silver piece dollars because of the silver shortage. Had to put a mintage cap on the Type 1 and Type 2 Eagles as well. I mean... And now the U.S. Mint not only just put the, you know, canceled the, the Morgans, now they also banned everyone from buying from them. 
only, I think, like seven or eight authorized dealers can still purchase through the U.S. Mint. And the company, Miles Franklin, in the bottom left-hand corner, is one of those companies. So if you like Eagles, if you like all that stuff, Constitutional Silver, and you want to continue buying from them, or, or just find silver in general, I highly recommend you build a business relationship with Andy Sheckman. Let him know Silver Slayer sent you. They'd love to hear that as well. But regardless, you could see the U.S. Mint Eagles premiums have been through the roof because they have been having the hardest time finding silver. And that's because they have a law that no other mint has. The U.S. Mint can only buy silver planchets from other companies at spot price. They can only pay spot. But if you're Sunshine Mint, which is where the U.S. Mint gets most of the silver from, why would Sunshine Mint want to have to sell at spot price when they could sell the other mints at way above spot? They can pay the premiums, and that's because they don't have the same law that the U.S. Mint does. And the U.S. Mint has that law because we're trying to hold down interest rates on our own $30 trillion of debt. So nobody wants to sell to the U.S. Mint because they would lose so much money having to only sell to them at spot price when they can go sell to Perth Mint or whoever else at way above spot. Makes sense. It's good for the Perth Mint and all these other mints because they can access silver. Yes, they have to pay more, but at least they're legally allowed to pay more. And then that also makes their, you know, the, the, the dealer happy because then they could sell it for higher. Nobody wants to mess with the U.S. Mint. They only do out of gratitude, out of a business relationship sometimes, but the least amount possible. And that's why the U.S. Mint can't find any silver, hence why Eagle's premiums are so much higher. Now, you could also ask why doesn't the U.S., why does the U.S. Mint outsource their silver? And that's because back in 2011 when they were, you know, minting 30 to 40 million per year, it was just easier to outsource instead of do in-house. And when they did that, they kind of shot themselves in the foot because nowadays they are at the mercy of everyone else because they outsource all of it. And there's more to the story. I'm not going to go into it because we're just talking about, you know, all silver, not just the U.S. Mint. You can go check out my videos if you really want to break down the laws and the legal side of things with that. So anyways, think about it. Without inventory, you would essentially become a backorder promise dealer. Building up a massive short position in silver while angering your customer base as you sit on their good funds, making them wait on purchase products delivery from the Mint. So what he's saying is there's no price equilibrium that needs to be balanced between today's now low supply and high demand for silver bullion. And then, by the way, if this shortage bleeds into gold bullion like it did in 2008, we'll likely be in the midst of another banking crisis. So he says, and I like this, he goes, for who remains still confused, I like to explain how and why silver bullion supply constraints are happening. Inventory shortages almost always happen during periods of dramatically falling spot prices. Bullion premiums spike as a consequence. And nowadays, it's, it's a lot more complex than that. Hopefully, I've explained it to some extent. I'm not going to go into all this stuff because it just seems more confusing. He's trying to break it down easier, but it seems like this is more confusing than making it simple. But regardless, right, regardless... This is the important part I wanted to talk about. This is why I hope you stuck through this part of the video. Because, and they actually talk about some good stuff here. Um, if you did want to, I post a link to all these articles in the description if you wanted to check this out. But I really want to go into selling because the longer the video goes on, the more people will be, the less people will see it. And I want you guys to see this. Selling. Selling, the one part that you can actually make a mistake. Have you ever thought about selling? I want you to answer a couple questions for me. Have you ever thought about selling? What price are you going to sell at? Have you ever thought about that? When silver is $200 or then you're going to, is that when you're going to throw in the towel and sell? You ever thought about that? How about, you, you ever thought about where you're going to sell to, what platform, are you going to sell in person, are you going to sell online, and if you're going to sell online, what site are you going to sell to, you ever thought about that, what about this, this is something that I learned that has helped me, helped me dramatically, before I ever even buy that coin that I'm looking at online, 
I think about how I'll be able to sell that coin before I even buy it. That has helped me. Uh, uh, that, that's helped me avoid a lot of bad purchases. Now, if you buy what you like, you'll never make a bad purchase, right? But when we're talking about the uh, the 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 strictly business portion of this, then you gotta find coins that are liquid, easily sellable. But you also gotta find good prices. You gotta keep condition good, especially if you're dealing with semi numismatic coins, high premium silver, silver that is not just for the metal content that you could touch with your hands and bang it around and scrap it. I'm talking about the coins that have collectible value to it. Right, brilliant uncirculated coins or graded coins. I have a lot of graded coins, um, and, and for that for that sake, you got to know how to store your silver. Are you storing it in a safe? And if you are, is it a low moisture area? Do you have tarnish strips in there, silica gel packs? Are you using gloves? Do you have coin capsules or coin tubes? This stuff matters, because if you buy an MS70 coin but that coin gets a milk spot on it or something, you might as well bust that coin out of that, that MS-70 slab that you paid an extra hundred plus dollars for and sell it as the raw coin because that coin's not, that, that's not an MS-70 coin anymore. So it is riskier, but you can also make more money since it's detached from spot price. What do you mean, Silver Slayer? Well, when you have a high premium semi-numismatic coin, that coin is not pegged to spot price. Other generic coin or generic rounds or bars pegged to spot price. So if in 20 years, if that generic round you have or that bar, if spot price is still $20 in 20 years from now, that means your stack has not appreciated a single penny. Now, it's highly, highly, highly unlikely that spot price will still be $20 in 20 years, but that's because your entire stack is pegged to what spot price does because it's just generic silver. It's just metal but if you have collectible coins some ms70 coins or some pandas or kookaburras that the design changes yearly more collectible regardless of what spot price does those coins will gradually appreciate so that's kind of your insurance policy that you'll still be making money regardless of what spot price does you see how diversification can be very important now let's go into selling back to selling i just thought that was important to throw in there let's say okay so this is what this is what I would recommend if you are someone who is planning on selling in the future you're turning yourself into a business basically you know I would and, and if you want the biggest bang for your buck you're gonna have to sell online because what's the odds that your local coin shop is willing to give you a higher price than literally anyone in the entire world. Chances are, one out of, you know, two billion, that there's going to be one of those two billion people that's willing to pay you a higher price than that one local coin shop owner. So eBay would be the ideal place nowadays. Maybe in 10, 20, 30 years, there'll be another platform. But eBay's probably going to be where you sell on. So I would, since liquidity is key, Make an eBay account right now. Name it something clever, right? Whatever it is. Mike's Coins and whatever. Mike's Silver, whatever, coin. Because if you try to sell all at once, list your entire stack in one week, that's going to not only be extremely time-consuming, but do you think anyone's going to want to buy off someone who just made an eBay account with no seller ratings? They just listed their entire stack at once. No. And I hope you wouldn't buy off someone who just made their account last week that has no seller ratings either. I'll never forget someone emailed me a long time. I think it was like in 2016. I think it was like during the July 2016 high of $21 silver. This guy's been buying silver for years and years. He said, Slayer, I wanted to liquidate some of my stack retirement or whatever and he said man i wish i would have thought about this he said i've been listing my silver but he said this is too much he said this is a full-time job listing my entire stack online because think about it you have to take two three four pictures per listing so if you're listing all these coins think about it a hundred ounces or think about a thousand ounces thousand ounces that's more realistic 
three to four pixels per list, and that's three to four thousand pixels you have to take. And then send to your email account, and then drag from your email account to eBay, and then write out a description for each one of those. Put the denomination, the weight, the 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 um, condition. Then you have to you have to talk to all these people. You have to have competitive prices. You have to build a reputation on there. Hence why I say make an eBay account right now. Just sell one ounce every couple of months or even four or five months. Just one ounce. Because at least in 10, 15 years from now, at least you will have sold enough because by then you would have a nice, you know, you, you'd have basically an eBay, uh, you, you'd have a business on there. And then you could start listing more and you'll have more credibility. You might actually have some coming back customers. It'll be easier to sell. Plus, you never want to sell your entire stack at once. You know, you don't want to peg your entire stack to one price. And this is just coming from a from a, a, a business perspective. If you're someone who's not planning on selling it ever or passing it down to your kids or grandkids, you don't got to worry about this. But I'm talking about the person that is in this to make money to some extent, right? And emergency stash. If a medical bill came up or something happened where you needed a nice chunk of change, what silver would you sell first? Panic selling is real. And if something happens on the spot and you're already in a very, you know, chaotic mind state, you could make a very silly decision because panic selling, irrational decision making kicks in. So if you already beforehand premeditatedly put a, a, a stack of silver aside for emergencies only, you're less, you're, you're going to be less likely to make a very bad decision in the midst of when that 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 scenario that crisis happens maybe it's you know have some five kilo bar set aside and if anything happens that's some that's some extra money you you could have right instead of just randomly making that decision on the spot during that crisis while emotions are high and panic sets in so yeah anyways you see why i wish i would have found a video like this when i first started stacking it would have saved me a lot of a lot of money and i'm and that's why I try to make videos like this to help the newbies or maybe you don't even have to be new to, to find all this as new knowledge. Who else on YouTube is going to talk about selling to that extent and give that type of advice? I mean, it's not anywhere that I've ever seen. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this and found it educational. Um, if you did, then please like the video. It helps the video spread. More stackers would hear this type of information and advice. And uh, you should subscribe because I do post daily videos. Not for my sake, but for your own. Um, we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. And when that happens, man, it's going to be a big, big party. I mean, I don't even know how much silver I'm going to give away. But it's going to be, it's going to be a lot. And I'm talking about... How many kilo bars? I don't know. Maybe even, you know, a monster box of eagles. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Um, maybe more realistic, like a half of a monster box. Because the monster box is like 25 tubes. It's like 500 ounces. Maybe I'll do like 100 ounces. Maybe 200. I don't know. Regardless, stick along because I do a lot of giveaways. Um, but more importantly, for yourself to get informed on a daily basis that's the most important thing thanks for tuning in this is silver slayer i'll see you guys soon peace